good morning all the participants i welcome all for this uh, one week online short term course on emerging trends and technical developments in uh, automated machines now we are in uh, day 4 and we are about to start our first session session 1 and today's speaker is uh, dr n venkaiya garu and his topic is uh, 3d printing so before start of uh, sar's speech i mean uh, the, the lecture so let me introduce you about the speaker so as i told you the name of the speaker is dr n venkaiya garu and he is presently working at um, indian institute of technology tirupati as associate professor in the department of mechanical engineering and along with that he is also serving as dean of students affair in iit tirupati If you look at the uh, education background of uh, the speaker, he completed his B Tech in 1999 in mechanical engineering from uh, S V University, Tirupati. And in the 2000, in the year 2000, uh, with the specialization of manufacturing technology, Sar has completed his M E from uh, N I T Tiruchirappalli. And then in the 2010, Sar completed his uh, P H D in manufacturing engineering area. from uh, iit madras so in total sar has a uh, have 15 years of uh, experience as a teacher and researcher and in his career sar uh, in his career sar has taught uh, uh, different subjects like uh, manufacturing processes metrology engineering drawing machine drawing manufacturing systems additive manufacturing mechatronics sim cad advanced in manufacturing processes like that and if you look at the research uh, interest area of our speaker they are engineering metrology electric discharge machining additive manufacturing modeling and optimization techniques computational geometric techniques and under his guidance um, a two phd students uh, has presented as presently guiding sorry under his guidance two phd students has completed their uh, phd and at present uh, seven uh, scholars are uh, doing their phd and the three ms research students are also there under him and in his career sir has guided the tm tech uh, projects and uh, sir has uh, published uh, nearly 30 papers in reputed journals and uh, conferences and if you look at the sponsored projects uh, the total worth of uh, 60 lakhs of projects are uh, on the head of the speaker the first one is a dst sponsored project that is on experimental studies on wire electric discharge machining and next one is a, a nme ict pedagogy project uh, this is a development of mechatronic course so web based one and uh, nmrl project narrow groove welding and next um, uh, technology development uh, side sar has developed 10 algorithms to evaluate circular and cylindrical components and he's had developed four algorithms to optimize edm processes and sir is also a reviewer for the international journal of advanced manufacturing technology journal of engineering manufacturing journal of uh, uh, brazilian society of mechanical science and engineering journal of process mechanical engineering and sir has visited few countries out of them uh, uk and usa are there and uh, sir has awarded as a young scientist project award in the year 2013 from uh, department of science and technology government of india so with this uh, short introduction so i request uh, dr venkai garu to start his speech sir. yeah thank you uh, dr jaykiran for uh, introducing me to the participants thanks a lot uh, yeah yeah so good morning all the participants uh thanks for joining and uh, uh, i also should thank uh, the management of uh, srinidhi institute of uh, science and technology and particularly dr jaykiran for inviting me to deliver this lecture uh, to share my uh, experiences in the field of uh, 3d printing <coughs> so uh, just a quick uh, clarification or information dr jaykiran How many participants are there, and uh, what is the composition of the participants? Uh, 
Uh, right now, 26 joined, sir. In fact, uh, uh, the total register are 70, and usually it is going to uh, beyond 55. But uh, I don't know why, what is the reason uh, the people are able to start, able to join. Like and the composition is um, um, faculty members are there, research scholars are there, industry persons are also there. Okay. Uh, this being the first uh, first session uh, today, maybe people may be joining in the in the in course of time. That's fine. So this is the lecture outline for another uh, 50 minutes or so. So I'll just touch upon the traditional manufacturing processes, the drawbacks, limitations, so that you will be able to appreciate the uh, capabilities of 3D printing process. Uh, yeah, I'll give you just a, a, a brief uh, overview of the 3D printing, also the applications, and finally, uh, what are the barriers uh, or the challenges in 3D printing. So this picture, if you look at uh, this boy, doesn't have the fingers. He is a physically challenged uh, kid, and 3D printing has enabled this boy uh, you know, to play uh, with a ball, okay? Uh, kids of this age uh, will be, you know, passionate about uh, playing, uh, all that, but if you don't have the fingers, you can imagine, uh, you know, how much distress or, you know, unhappiness that a kid can encounter. So you can see here, these are the artificial fingers built using the 3D printer and uh, he can he can play as usual, okay? If not 100%, you know, to a great extent, uh, you know, the challenges overcome here. So, uh, as it goes, a picture, you know, says more than 1,000 words. So, here, financial terms and sources quote saying that 3D printing is potentially larger than the internet. See, we all have experienced the impact that internet has created on us okay so uh, you 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 can name a field every field there is you no know, internet has uh, penetrated into each and every field isn't it so the the you know dramatic changes have happened in many spheres of our life all right uh, so that is the impact of internet of course uh, needless to say that you know we we also lost the mental peace due to internet okay if you use it uh, judiciously uh, you can reap the you know fruits of internet otherwise you know you 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 also uh, will be you know wasting lot of time uh, you know in the in the process of you know internet usage so this this saying goes 3d printing is potentially larger than the internet okay so that is the you know kind of impact 3D printing is going to create on all of us in the future to come. So, as I said, we'll touch upon the traditional manufacturing processes. Uh, you know all these things just for the sake of you know continuity and also the to to connect you, uh, you know, to connect this uh, 3D printing uh, in the perspective of other manufacturing processes. I'll just take you through the uh, traditional manufacturing processes. Uh, so this is, what is this process called? This is a casting process. Spoon -tip, spoon -tip process. Yeah, casting process, okay. So you all are very much aware of this process. Uh, if it is a sand casting process, you will use uh, the, the uh, you know, molds, Okay, mold uh, the boxes filled with the sand. So different uh, process, different technologies are there in uh, casting itself. Okay, if you take a simple sand casting process, uh, you will be using the pattern to create the cavity, right? You have the two parts of the uh, you know uh, equipment. One is drag, and another one is the coop, and you will have to cut the the runners, the uh, you know sprue risers all that okay and then you will melt the metal and then pour into the uh, mold cavity to realize uh, the solidified casting and then you will remove 
the screw runner okay this these are the excess uh, materials that are to be removed to realize a solid uh, component which is of desired shape accordingly you will be uh, you know afterwards you will have to uh, uh, take this component for uh, you know post processing like uh, finishing uh, or uh, you know uh, machining depending upon the uh, you know kind of accuracies or surface finish that you may want on the component so this is the sequence of you know the process steps in the casting process you can look at uh, this process this is the powder metallurgy particulate processing so you prepare the powders and then you confine the powders uh, in between to uh, you know uh, punches press the powder so that it will become uh, you know solid uh, thing but in order to enhance uh, you know as such you can't use this component when you uh, you know cold press this these powders uh, of course you can see the shape of the component there but that is not readily usable so in order to enhance the strength and also yeah we strength is enhanced by you know uh, ensuring that the particles bond uh, you know uh, the particles bond to each other uh, well so that you will realize uh, you know a stronger component okay by heating the uh, this uh, you know pressed component pressed uh, you know shape so these are the sequence of steps and you need a uh, part specific uh, tooling here isn't it so for you to uh, realize a particular shape on the component you need to have uh, the replica of the uh, component shape available on the punches dies all that so part specific tooling is required so when it comes to the deformation processes uh, you can have the forging process the drawing so the uh, uh, how are you able to deform the uh, material here so basically you, you apply the force which is uh, more than the yield strength of the material then you will be able to deform the, the material into required shape all right and you have a whole lot of uh, you know different uh, machining processes, turning process, drilling process, milling process, and so on and so forth. So, in these processes, basically, what is that you are doing? You are removing the excess material in the form of chips, and you realize a uh, desired shape on the component, desired uh, desired shape, desired dimensions, desired surface finish, all that you will be able to realize. But you'll have to uh you know this this is uh, possible with the reduction of the excess material that is wastage is happening of course you will be you know remelting the uh, chips and uh, you know you will be recycling that it's a different story so that is how the machining processes uh, go on so what are the limitations of all these aforesaid uh, manufacturing processes Let us make it a little interactive instead of me talking throughout uh, the you know one hour, uh, which may be boring. So, do you see any limitations associated with the, with the processes that we just discussed? Yeah, we should. Uh... We may have the wastage of material while we are uh, making it finishing. Yeah, while, while shaping the material, uh, you may be wasting some material, yes. So, material wastage. And uh, achieving the complex shape is also a bit difficult. Uh, for this, yeah, right? very complex components, it is very difficult using the conventional manufacturing processes. What else? You need part specific tooling, isn't it? For you to achieve, for example, thread cutting, you want to make on the component. So, can you use any single point cutting tool for making the thread cutting? You need a specific tool for thread cutting, isn't it? 
so similarly in the case of uh, forging process you want to realize a particular shape on the component then accordingly your dies have to be shaped before that isn't it so that is so dies are the tools there in the forging process according uh, uh, similarly in the casting process uh, for you to is a particular shape you need to prepare the pattern right so part specific tooling is essential in all the uh, conventional manufacturing processes so the the moment you change you know you are going to change the shape of the component different component you want to manufacture next uh, next moment then accordingly you have to uh, you know use different tools okay uh, you may have to sometimes uh, you know manufacture the tools first or purchase the tools and then use to to realize a different component right and also last minute changes in design very difficult to accommodate last minute changes in the design all right uh, this is another limitation number of process steps and the resources required all that is tremendous and reverse engineering is also difficult in the case of conventional processes okay. it's not easy i'm not saying it is impossible it is difficult so on demand manufacturing on demand manufacturing that is you know uh, now at this moment you want to manufacture a particular component okay then uh, you are, you may not be ready uh, it needs some time okay some resources all that and repair work is difficult for example some uh, on a component at a particular location some uh, portion has been uh, damaged that portion alone we want to uh, repair instead of you know replacing the component with a new one if you can re you know repair that portion alone then you can reuse it that way you can save a lot of uh, you know time resources effort you know uh, all that uh, the money all that yeah so uh, <coughs> you have uh, you know, just electricity some raw material and a computer with these three things you are able to manufacture the, uh, something okay so that is really exciting okay table top manuf manufacturing all right so with with the very minimal uh, facilities if you are able to manufacturing uh, manufacture some uh, you know component you know, that that brings the flexibility and the convenience uh, to us suppose your uh, watch you are wearing uh, strap and buckle has been damaged okay so under normal circumstances what we do we just replace the entire strap all right and if buckle is not available or some uh, you know portion of the buckle has been damaged so you may be replacing the entire strap and i uh, you know if you want to buy a good quality strap it may cost you somewhere around 500 rupees or so so if you can manufacture that buckle alone okay uh with a simple you know we using the free sketching tools available nowadays on the you know web uh, if you can sketch it and then you know manufacture at your home itself then you can see the kind of you know flexibility or satisfaction that you may get and what if you automated the manufacturing of uh, hearing aids see for the uh, you know uh, people who are deaf okay uh, hearing aids are used and you see the geometry of the ear is slightly different for different people not same uh, you know the sizes uh, slight variations will be there and the geometry also will be slightly varying it is not same for everybody there will be slight variations in the geometry of the ear where this hearing aid goes and sits comfortably so one hearing aid uh, will not be suitable for everybody okay so it may be either tight or loose so you will have the inconvenience so if you can scan the uh, the ear and then you know print the custom uh, uh, you know customized hearing aid then it will it will uh, properly sit in the in the ear and then uh, you know you you know you will be able to have uh, comfort in the in the ear so if you are able to manufacture such things in mass okay so many components uh, per unit time and all these components they are all hearing aids but they are uh, they are all different in terms of the sizes shape all that all right that is what we call 
mass customization. Simply mass production, you will be producing the same size, same component, uh, thousands and lakhs of components. That is called mass production. But mass customization, you are, you are still engaged in producing you know, a lot of components, but the, each component is different in terms of size and shape. Okay, slight variations will be there, but all are called, all are the same component, hearing aids only, but little different. So, uh, we are all aware of this 2D, 2D printing, so document printing. Okay, you create a document, word document, and then you give a printout, you get a paper out of it, okay, printed paper. So, this is called the 2D printing. So, we, we are very much familiar with this, so we are able to convert this digital information, digital uh, copy to physical copy, right? In the same way, 3D printing, that is the name, uh, that is how the name has been coined here, 3D printing. This is also a printing. But the the, comp the physical thing is here, uh, 3D uh, component, right? So, uh, let us say you want to manufacture a sphere. You want to manufacture a sphere, whether it is a metallic component or a metallic sphere or a plastic sphere, the material could be different materials, all right? So the old way is, uh, you know, to take a block of material and then you will be carving, you will be carving and then realizing the sphere, all right? So that takes a lot of time, effort, all that. Modern way involves generating the 3D model and then using the CNC, uh, program and then CNC machine you can use and then you will be machining away the excess material and then you can realize the uh, you know uh, sphere by uh, removing the excess material all right it needs uh, you know uh, complicated fixturing it's not so easy to produce a sphere all right so you need a fixturing all that part specific tooling fixturing all that so 3D printing, on the other hand, generates a 3D model. So you can create a sphere on a, any solid modeling software like a Pro Engineer or Katia, SolidWorks, whatever. So you can create the solid model and then uh, you will have to slice this uh, solid model virtually uh, into different uh, you know, slices. And you will be using the 3D printer to build, to deposit uh, the material in a layered fashion. All right, layer by layer manufacturing. So that is what is called 3D printing. So the definition goes like this. The process of joining materials to make objects from 3D model data, usually layer upon layer, as opposed to subtractive manufacturing. Your machining process, for example, is a subtractive manufacturing process. Okay. This was the definition given uh, in uh, 2010 by ASTM, but later on, in 2015, this definition was withdrawn, saying that, you know, this definition will not fully encompass uh, different, uh, you know, technologies which are available under the 3D printing or additive manufacturing. So this is not a comprehensive definition. In fact, there is no, uh, you know, uh, fully uh, acceptable, uh, everywhere, universally acceptable definition for 3D printing, okay? So, what are the attributes of additive manufacturing or 3D printing? Is there no 3D printing additive additive manufacturing are little interchangeably used uh, in today's uh, world, but there is slight difference between additive manufacturing and uh, 3D printing. So, if you are uh, if you are you know depositing the material directly, uh, then it comes under the 3D printing. Okay, fused deposition modeling, for example, it is a 3D printing, but a additive manufacturing is uh, you know very broad term which includes 3d printing also additive manufacturing you will have several different technologies uh, for example you are using a, a laser power to melt the powders okay instead of depositing the uh, molten metal layer by layer laser uh, machine uh, direct metal uh, laser sintering dmls for example you, you use the laser to uh, melt the powder, maybe metallic powder, and, uh, you know, fuse that and uh, realize the component. So, so you have different, uh, you know, technologies, and uh, AM is a broader term, 
and usually this am is used in the industry uh, you know uh, perspective uh, but 3d printing is usually you know uh, used uh, in the in the you know household applications consumer products these things yeah uh, so the attributes of additive manufacturing is you know you can convert uh, the scenarios from physical uh, you know uh, from digital to physical okay so no part specific tooling is required you see you change the design now you are ready for manufacturing immediately there is no need of any other uh, specific tooling required and also progressive addition of material or melting of uh, powders all that so this 3d printing or additive manufacturing has got several alternate names like a rapid prototyping that was the initial days when this technology was emerging people initially uh, used this technology for uh, readily printing the prototypes rapid prototyping uh, was the term used at that time but today it is no more rapid prototyping it is uh, it is no more a prototyping you are able to realize the end user products end user industrial components you can produce so uh it is uh, you know rapid manufacturing additive manufacturing solid free form uh, manufacturing direct digital manufacturing there are several different names for this technologies i'll just show you one video uh, for you to uh, you know uh, have a glimpse or feel for the additive manufacturing <coughs> So you can observe here, there are two spools. Uh, so one spool, uh, you know, the, basically here the material is available in the form of uh, wire, okay? So one spool will be uh, having wire which is used for, uh, you know, building the component, okay? Actual component material is built using one, uh, you know, spool. And the other uh, wire in uh, other spool is basically used to uh, act as a support material whenever, for example, some slant uh, features are there, surfaces are there, unless, uh, un until and unless you support them, you can't build that particular feature on the component. So, uh, one wire material is used for supporting the, you know, component while building and another one, another wire is used for, uh, you know, uh, depositing the uh, actual material which is, uh, which is there on the component, all right. So two spools are basically used. Uh, they may be sometimes, you know, uh, same materials, uh, and sometimes it may be different materials also. So you can observe here, the build material is this black material, all right? And see, for you to, uh, you know, build this kind of a shape. So the, before this uh, material, can you see my uh, cursor? Are you able to see, see my cursor? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, so for example, this layer, this, this layer for you to deposit, if you deposit simply, uh, you know, this, this, this may fall down, that is the reason uh, you know, before depositing this material, black material, this white material is deposited so that it acts as a uh, support for this material to be, uh, you know, uh, standing there.
yeah so that is the uh, just glimpse of uh, how the 3d printing process goes uh, you can see here uh, different industrial sectors where 3d printing or additive manufacturing is used in terms of uh, the percentages you can see motor vehicles uh, aerospace industrial or business machines consumer products uh, then uh, you know medical or dental applications academic institutions especially you know for prototyping etc government or military applications architectural see uh, before the actual uh, you know building is uh, realized uh, the architect can build a prototype of the building for for explaining to the uh, you know people uh, who are in stake uh, for them to have a feel and then uh, you know give some inputs or feedback so that there can be some uh, design changes uh, that can uh, come into picture and then uh, you know you can go for the uh, actual uh, you know realization of the building or these days even campus the entire campus uh, is uh, built a prototype is built okay model uh, to see where which uh, facility comes which building comes what how are the roads uh, roads uh, you know laid what are the areas where parks will be coming everything you can the entire campus for example one educational institute or some industry uh, entire campus can be built prototype can be built using the 3d printer and uh, you know you, the, that can be used to demonstrate the various uh, you know facilities that are going to come uh, uh, in future so this is a hype cycle we call it which indicates how the technologies are emerging maturing okay stabilizing all that so you can see here uh, in 2013 in 2013 the consumer 3d printing was shown at the almost peak okay the consumer 3d printing so every technology uh, you know when it is envisaged when it is uh, you know uh, developed uh, it goes through this particular cycle so initially it starts as a concept and then uh, you know it may be uh, you know the hype may be generating and then it may attain some peak and you know later people realize that there is no that much potential for this technology it is only a hype all that uh, all right and then the you know the the hype will come down okay you might have observed some time back people were talking a lot about nanotechnology okay that was the buzzword so like that 3d printing also so every technology will undergo this particular cycle it reaches the peak and then there will be a decline and uh, you know you can see here trough of disillusion uh, uh, okay but that is not the case uh, there may be some limitations for that particular technology at that time but the developments in other areas may uh, come very handy for this technology and then suddenly you will see uh, the growth of this particular technology over a period of time okay uh, and then it attains some you know uh, plateau uh, this is the maturity or stability that is where the technology will uh, survive okay yeah so what is the current status am technologies are rapidly evolving so better and cheaper machines uh, see in 2009 this uh, strategy uh, stratasys stratasys is a very big company uh, so they are responsible for the you know 3d printing and especially uh, fused deposition modeling fdm technology so they are the people who developed the technology fdm so when you develop a technology uh, you patent it right so the moment you put a patent others cannot uh, cannot uh, you know use that technology to build the machines so the uh, the whole soul and whole uh, proprietorship is with the uh, company who develops the technology so of course it is not forever okay the company can, the, as per the you know guidelines uh, that are available the uh, company who builds the technology cannot say that you know forever this is my technology and nobody should be able to build the machine using my technology that is not the case there will be certain amount of time uh, during which the uh, only that particular company will be able to produce the machines okay maybe some 20 years or so typically so this period uh, expired in 2009 for stratasys okay and uh, many other uh, companies also subsequently 
so the moment patents are expired uh, the other players will jump in and uh, you know try to uh, develop their own machines okay based on the technology but they, they can't you know build the same as it is but uh, they can use the technology to build the machines that is where from 2009 you can see a lot of growth in the 3d printing or additive manufacturing uh, you know process so many players have come into the uh, you know in uh, market and they started building the machines and that's how the uh, 3d printing has seen uh, you know rapid growth from there onwards so now there is a healthy competition in the in the market so anybody can develop a machine and then uh, you know uh, compete so advances in online monitoring and process control so that also has enabled the privacy the advantage with uh, especially you know mechanical engineering is that whenever some developments uh, take place in other fields the discipline mechanical engineering in, uh, you know embraces them uh, brings those uh, you know uh, developments into its own uh, field and that is how mechanical engineering grows that is the reason you know mechanical engineering has got this potential uh, you know we call it evergreen uh, field so it, it will be there always there will be some cycle okay the waves will be there up and down uh, today the computer science uh, is the trend okay if you ask us uh, you know the student uh, what why which branch you want to join immediately he or she says computer science okay uh, but that is the trend now that is a you know high wave now for the computer science but the other branches also will be uh, you know uh, will have to be there in the in the you know scene uh, you know you can't uh, you know say i'll write a code but where will you implement it there should be hardware right so that is where uh, you know the developments in the other fields are are embraced by mechanical engineering and that is how the mechanical engineering also grows that is the one of the uh, you know important hallmarks of mechanical engineering field so bigger machines are uh, are found in the market and uh, in fact uh, we also built uh, uh, 3d printing that is additive manufacturing technology that is uh, you know machine uh, using uh, wire arc additive manufacturing uh, technology so at iit tirupati we have uh, built this uh, setup wire arc additive manufacturing to 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 you know realize the metallic components so plastic there are so many you know players in the market for plastic uh, you know components uh, plastic machines uh, but metallic components really it is a very expensive uh, area building the metallic components so the machine uh, if you want to purchase a commercial machine it starts somewhere around uh, minimum some two and a half crore okay that is the order of the you know uh, costs involved in the especially metal 3d printers so wider range of uh, printable materials and non proprietary materials uh, so this is another uh, you know uh, thing so the materials initially uh, it all started with the plastics with you know stereolithography uh, and also fdm uh, technology uh, plastics were extensively used to build the components but nowadays several different materials you know, metals ceramics all those things are possible to be built and these materials also suppose you want to you you purchase a machine uh, let us say uh, metallic uh, you know metal machine metal 3d printer usually they the company which supplies the metal uh, metal machine also tries to supply the uh, you know materials but uh, we have to be careful when we are you know purchasing the machine we should be careful that you know the machine is little open ended that means the machine should be able to accommodate materials from other suppliers also otherwise it becomes a proprietary nature and the same machine uh, supplier you know will be dictating uh, the terms okay you are bound to purchase the materials from the same company and they will be selling at a higher rates because uh, machine will not support other materials okay so such thing was there at the beginning but nowadays even machine builders are coming up with uh, this option saying that you know even uh, before we ask them uh, uh, you know uh, the machine should be able to accommodate uh, you know uh, third party materials they are saying you know our machine is uh, uh, open so that you know you can you can use the third party materials so non proprietary materials 
that is another uh, you know a significant change in the recent times so specialized processes customized machines application specific solutions all these things are uh, the current uh, status so am is is already into the industrial use please note that it is not just a prototyping technology it is already used in the industry today so what are the unique benefits or capabilities of 3d printing it is very rapid especially when the complexity increases same complex component if you want to manufacture using the conventional manufacturing process okay it takes a lot of time so in few hours you will be able to realize the new component so what you see is what you build just imagine not only seeing just imagine some shape and then create it in the solid model you will be able to you know realize the component so manufacturing is simplified in the sense that fully automatic and unattended operation okay so you don't have you don't need any person to be you know uh, available there uh, moving the you know here you know, uh, uh, the machine i mean uh, moving the you know different elements of the machine all that not required it is just just switch on the machine then at, uh, you know this evening tomorrow morning and uh, come and collect the component that's all so no part specific tooling last minute changes in design can be accommodated easily reduce the number of process steps and uh, other resources reverse engineering is possible okay so reverse engineering is uh, yes you may be aware the, you know the existing component you can uh, build it again there may be several different reasons for that okay it is not illegal reverse engineering you know there are two facets of this okay so you should not be producing the same component whatever other company is producing and then you can you cannot uh, start selling it okay so if you just you know uh, um, uh, try to uh, analyze for for analyzing the component the competitors uh, uh, component or product for analyzing you can use the reverse engineering process in the in, and uh, you know at the end you should be able to improve the product and then you can release into the market cost effective and also time effective significant savings in the materials because you are not going to you know waste the materials here geometrical freedom so we call it uh, you know the complexity is free that is the uh, you know uh, there is a kind of uh, flexibility you have any complexity is possible so no restriction on part geometry reduce the number of parts or assembly costs all those things all right so there are many more benefits like that better pa pa properties and performance design innovation we have design innovation we have materials innovation design innovation means you will be designing the component innovatively such that you know where more material is uh, to be available where less material where which type of material uh, in which section all those things design innovation materials innovation you may build components with uh, you know uh, few, uh, functionally graded materials so at different locations different materials so that you know a particular location may be experiencing certain amount of temperature certain amount of uh, you know loads all that so not all materials will be able to withstand all types of loads so that is the you know, purpose of this fgms or multi materials microstructural design is also possible in 3d printing so at that level microstructure level also you can uh, you can alter the you know the microstructure at different locations you can have different microstructures also customization prosthetic implants okay you can see here this this man has lost leg okay so the artificial prosthetic implants means artificial uh, devices artificial body devices okay very much possible uh, on demand manufacturing you can make the things then and there so one fantastic example this mars rover which was uh, you know sent in 2020 by nasa uh, onto the mars okay this is the one so the 3d printer also was taken along with the uh, mars rover so if some part has been damaged there then 3d printer will be able to print it and then uh, that can that part can be used okay so that is the you know kind of advancement 3d printing has gone into so reduced inventory and the storage costs no lead times uh, issues all that because the moment you you know deal with so many different uh, and you know uh, different uh, types of tooling different materials all that you will have to store them isn't it the moment you store them it they will have some shelf, shelf life okay you can't store a material for 10 years for example okay then inventory costs all those things are involved in conventional manufacturing so micro manufacturing is very much possible household technology okay uh, all that is possible with the 3d printing process 
So materials options, you have the metallic materials, polymers, biocompatible materials, and uh, you know other uh, materials like uh, you can use, you can uh, you know, print the ceramics, all that, okay, wax, everything. So I'll quickly take you through the uh, different applications of additive manufacturing process because we are running out of time. Uh, so you can just see these pictures. Uh, you know you can you can prepare the molds for casting, okay, uh, and also you can uh, you know prepare the patterns for casting for realizing jewelry. Or you can, all that you can you can see here different the kind of complexity, especially in the jewelry industry. The complexity will be very high, as you all are aware of. Uh, the direct tooling in the in the case of uh, forging processes, okay. The dye manufacturing is uh, critical there. So the moment dye is ready, you can produce. Uh, you know, tens of thousands of components using the same dye. And yeah, you can see here the kind of uh, complexity, impeller, uh, all these things, okay. The, the shape is very, uh, not a regular shape, okay. You can see here at the bottom left cycle, which is manufactured, okay, using the 3D printing technology, uh, not by producing, uh, you know, part by part, entirely, you know, you, 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 this cycle is produced uh, in at a stretch, not just producing the parts and then assembling them, okay? No assembly is required, just cycle is produced in one go, okay? And of course, you need to have the relative motion between the wheel and the frame, right? So that is also possible. And so you can see here, spanner, conventionally, uh, you know, you will be producing the, these parts and then you will assemble. But in 3D printing, you can just produce in one go, the entire spanner, right? You can look at uh, different applications here. You can see this uh, impeller, which is not a very regular shape, as you can see, okay? And uh, you can use 3D printing for, you know, uh, producing the idols, all that. And these are this is the mass customization we were talking about uh, some time back, all right? So different uh, uh, prototypes, you know, for medical applications, all right? You see here, for example, this skull is damaged here, okay? So the damaged skull can be repaired, you can see here. That can be, that portion alone can be repaired using the biocompatible materials uh, and dental crowns, all right? So different, uh, you know, implants. Even you can go to the extent of organ manufacturing, heart manufacturing, you can see here, bottom right, the total artificial heart developed at ETH Zurich in this university. Okay, this heart has been manufactured, artificial heart. And you can look at this bird which lost the beak, uh, and that beak alone, you know, it is, uh, uh, you know, fabricated and then uh, you know, it is attached. Yeah, some people may be crazy sometimes. Uh, you know, the, the the father here, proud father whose baby is uh, still inside the, you know, in the womb, uh, you know, that this uh, thing is, you know, printed and, uh, you know, used as a keychain, of course. Th that shows the, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, flexibility or advancement uh, the 3D printing brings. So you can see titanium necklace being manufactured, the sandals being manufactured, okay. So Airbus, the British Airbus engineers aim to print the entire aircraft wing okay so if you can manufacture entire aircraft wing in a go then uh, you know you can think of you know what else you can expect from a technology and you can see here house being 3d printed okay so this is possible and you can see on the right side iitm has built uh, in fact a 600 square feet uh, uh, you know area house uh, by the you know startup uh, company at IIT Madras, okay, uh, I think some uh, two years back or so, and uh, so the, it was constructed using the uh, indigenous concrete 3D printing technology. So they say that in just five days a house can be built, okay. So you just uh, imagine that you know you have you left your uh, home, you have gone somewhere, so some other city. Uh, you know, spent some one week, came back by the by uh, by the side of your house. There is uh, another house, okay, built. So it, it uh, really you know uh, astonishes. 
so 3d printing is used for printing the chocolates different designs all that 3d printing can also you know uh, print meat okay we call it cell culture okay so those people some you know the people uh, usually we have sometimes uh, they, you know at some point of time you feel you know why are we killing the animal and then eating okay how painful it is for the animal all that this kind this technology can uh, you know can be uh, very handy in such cases where you know you don't have to uh, you know um, kill the animal to to eat the meat you can you can just print it okay you can develop the um, meat cell culture we call it okay so at your home you can uh, you know you can just design your brush okay you do, you are not you don't like uh, a conventional you know toothbrush okay you can you can modify the design you can uh, we have your own design and then print it at your home itself toothbrush okay so this is a household manufacturing consumer product all right so reverse engineering is another uh, you know very very much uh, convenient in uh, 3d printing this reverse engineering reverse engineering is used already uh, with uh, you know cnc machines all that but 3d printing uh, it uh, you know the reverse engineering is very much convenient for 3d printing technology so having said all these uh, things it is very rosy but it also has this technology also has certain barriers okay uh, so i'll just quickly take you through some some of the limitations or the challenges that are presently available with this technology so when it comes to accuracy uh, when you are building them you know component layer by layer you can see here uh, staircase okay staircase uh, effect that that is uh, that is a concern here so you will be losing some accuracy here okay so to reduce this error what we do you we we build uh, with a lesser uh, you know layer thickness okay so that you can reduce the errors and increase the accuracies but of course when you build the component with a smaller thickness the build time will be increasing okay that is a challenge all right so finish is of course a uh, problem here you don't get a very good surface finish like in the case of uh, you know cnc machines so cnc machines will give you very good surface finish okay of the order of uh, you know some 10 microns or so accuracy is all that uh, yeah when it comes to the part strength so depending upon the build orientation uh, you know uh, suppose you are applying the force in a particular direction for example in this direction it may be able to extend more uh, you know force compared to this particular you know, direction of the force you see here the component is built in this direction okay so if the layers are not fused uh, properly then what happens the part gets separated at this uh, at a particular layer where the bond strength is not sufficient enough so secondary operations are uh, almost always there in 3d printing uh, so post curing uh, in the case of stereolithography and also you know uh, even in the case of metallic uh, parts manufacturing you may have to undergo uh, the part may have to undergo the heat treatment all that right and uh, infiltration is another post processing uh, thing so for especially fragile uh, components so what happens here the component density is less so you want to increase the density so you just leave the component in a uh, uh, liquid metal bath so that the metal will get you know uh, infiltrated into the pores of the uh, component so that you will increase the density and increase the strength final machining of course is uh, required most of the times uh, final uh, machining is required to bring the component to the required sizes and shape and removal of the su uh, support structures is also uh, necessary so you can see here support structure you can see this uh, component this red part is the support structure after removing this red part this is the component okay and uh, in the case of stereolithography also you can see here this 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 structure honeycomb structure this is the uh, support structure that has to be removed uh, to realize the final component okay so 3d printing versus conventional manufacturing uh, in a nutshell this is my last uh, slide so 3d printing uh, cannot become a complete replacement for the other manufacturing methods please note that uh, you know when we say 3d printing is a new technology that doesn't mean all the other technologies will become obsolete or uh, they will become useless not 
uh, it is not so okay so you are mentioning will be will still be there casting edm all other manufacturing processes will be there okay it is the application it is the special requirement for example very complex component you want to manufacture then 3d printing is your resort okay so 3d printing technologies are instead complementary for complex or intricate geometric forms simultaneous fabrication of multiple parts in the into a single assembly okay you don't have to manufacture some different components and then assemble them you can just build the entire component entire product multiple materials or composite materials in the same part that is also possible So uh, that is briefly about the overview of the 3D printing. Uh, yeah, I have seen the uh, I have seen the you know uh, what do you call uh, this uh, schedule of your workshop. There are few more lectures on 3D printing. Uh, so I think uh, this this is the uh, you know, I thought I can give you the overview so that uh, you will be able to understand other things, other concepts, other lectures. Which are following uh, today. Yeah. So, if you have any uh, questions, I'll be happy to take up. Yeah, participants, uh, you can ask the questions. Okay. Meanwhile, I have a question, sir. This is uh, Dr. Jai Kiran Reddy. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, 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 what will be the total time required uh, 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 for uh, uh, manufacture of any component when you compare with the traditional? Itself? For example, let's take a small example that uh, suppose uh, if you want to manufacture a, a, a component and that can be done using casting and other side that can also be done using uh, uh, 3D printing. So what yes. about the time required, total time required when we compare with those two? So which one will have the less time? Say, if you have all the tooling ready, in the case of casting, if you have all the tooling ready, like a pattern, molds, uh, you know, uh, everything is ready, your furnace is everything ready, then casting will take less time compared to 3D printing. So, what I mean to say, if that part can be manufactured using conventional manufacturing process, you go with conventional manufacturing process because you can, you can save a lot of time. But if the component is very very complex and uh, the the conventional manufacturing will take huge amount of time especially when the complexity is uh, very high so in such a case 3d printing will definitely take less of time thank you sir. and what about the strength issues sir? yeah strength issues uh, the you know, usually density is a concern uh, in the components manufactured using the 3D printing technology. So, uh, but these days, uh, as I already mentioned, infiltration, all these techniques uh, you can use, and also you can, uh, you also have this, you know, hybrid manufacturing uh, technologies like, uh, you know, you, you just deposit a layer and then uh, allow your robot, uh, your robot to, you know, uh, you know, roll over it so that you will be able to increase the density and uh, again deposit the layer that this is called the hybrid manufacturing this is also very this is also emerging these days hybrid manufacturing so but as such if you purely manufacture using 3d printing technology alone then density issues will be there and strength will be a concern there and also the the uh, you know it depends upon the direction of force that you apply as i already explained uh, the your build direction and uh, your direction of force okay those things have to be taken care of so for, uh, as i explained here as i explained here see this component is built in this direction in the height direction and the force is also applied in the same direction then what happens if the layers are not properly fused then the component gets separated wherever the weakest section is there weakest bond is there so that is that is likely that is uh, you know these these issues in fact are uh, opportunities for the researchers to focus and you know address these things uh, yeah if everything is perfect uh, you know as far as the technology is concerned if everything is perfect then there is nothing that you know you and i can do here okay so there is no scope for any research 
so this technology has some uh, issues to be addressed that is where opportunity lies for the researchers yeah thank you sir yes. any other questions from other participants Okay, sir. Since no other questions, uh, sir, I should thank you for such a lovely um, um, I mean, uh, presentation about the three D printing. In just one hour, you have uh, given us the complete picture of uh, what exactly the three D printing is. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank you, J. K.